Welcome, welcome. School, I think school started this week, kids. School start this week. I don't know about that yet. I'm getting there. Next week, it's kind of everything like this week, last week, next week. Teachers have started, yes. Well, it's a fun week, and we have a fun, fun event, especially we haven't done a kids and family just health event in, in a while, class, and I figured it was overdue, and even though it's not usually one of our biggest classes we do by, by, by relativity, but it's one of the most important, I think, for some big reasons. Obviously, there's nothing more important other than God than your family and your family's well-being. I think that's so huge and so important, and it gets overlooked a lot, and not from a sense of, I would say, intently getting overlooked. I just think there's a lot of naive naivety or ignorance, and not in a bad way, just like we're really not told so much about how to really, it's confusing. There's too much stuff out there, and a lot of this is uh, paralysis by analysis. There's just too much information out there. A lot of it really isn't that good on really what's the best thing to do for your kids, for your family, it's well-being. And we want to change that, make it a little bit easier to do, and really not make it confusing, but make it to where there's some literally sound things and changes that you can do right now and start that tonight with not only yourself, with your family, with your kids, and really start seeing them get everything out of their nutrition. It's a big, big deal. And I just, I'm excited. Are you guys excited about this? Because I'm excited, especially when you talk about kids. That's such a big deal um, when it comes to me. I want to show you my little rugrats. These are are my kids. Um, so if you don't know, they've been with me for a while. You know, Aiden, this is our newest. This is Shayla, and, and he's four, and she's, uh, gosh, she's 17 months now. Um, this was July 4th. This was July, we were on vacation, and we were in Disney World. In case you're wondering, well, well, cool, that wasn't real. That was like Disney World. So it's a, you know, we're a Disney buff family. But just this is stuff that, like, I'm going to share with you some some successes and some failures that we've had with our kids, especially when it comes to the nutrition thing. That's such a big deal. Um, and my kids are polar opposites when it comes to their behaviors. Does anybody have that? Like, it's it's kind of cool, but at the same time, with our first one, it's funny. Um, I, for a long time, we were like, man, just because my, my son is, is um, um, very, like with nutrition, you'll get, I'll talk about him in, in, in a lot of ways, but with nutrition, most pickiest kid, stubborn when it comes to that. Uh, you know, if you have stubborn kids when it comes to nutrition, my son is, I don't know, I'd put him up there with anybody else. I really would because he's so stubborn. And, uh, and it's funny, I'll get to you on, on, on these tricks we've had to do to get around him. But with, with our daughter, it's the complete opposite. Like she doesn't want her like age group food. She wants the adult food. Like she wants to eat everything. And I'm like, this is great. Where have you been? Because we were like, is, is this house going to be their second one? So just they can be completely different. So I just want to share some of that success, some of the failures as well. But when it comes to kids right now, like kids have adult conditions. Did you not know that? Like people think, oh, it's just kids or, oh, it's not that big a deal. She's five or she's six. We have to watch that language because it's very, very debilitating and it's deadly long-term, I think, just because you can really set your kids up for very bad health and very bad you know, health conditions um, long-term. But it's true. If you don't know this, I'm telling you right now, from 10 years ago, me seeing kids, I see more kids now with just stuff I never thought I'd see in children. I never thought I'd see kids getting, you know, they've been, they've been doing consoles to get their, you know, parts of their colon taken out. At six and eight years old, I never thought in, in a million years I'd see that, you know, 10 years into practice, but I do. And it's not just one child, it's multiple kids. We see it. We see kids that are told they have to have surgery. They're told they have to have things taken out all the time. Well, this was, I think, a really scary study that was done. They, they studied, they did autopsies on 200 children in, in different ages in, who had passed through an auto accident. Very sad way to do the study, but that, that's how they were able to do the autopsies. What they, they found in these kids is really alarming. So the kids that were ages 2 to 15, 10% of them had placking of their coronary arteries. At, at two, age 2 to 15 years old, they had placking in their arteries. Check this out. Age 16 to 20, 35% of the autopsies showed that much placking, 35%. And then by their mid-20s, over 70% had placking in their arteries by their mid-20s. Placking in the arteries, is that, is that a normal thing? It's getting to be that way. It's so common now. It's definitely not normal, but it's common. Um, 
another big one because we've actually seen this the the american academy of pediatricians they 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 are actually getting to the point where because cholesterol and diabetes is so rampant in kids now that at, they're lowering the age limit to prescribe statins to kids to eight years old to eight like i have it's it, we have a patient who's been a patient with me for a long time one of his really good friends' son is eight years old, and he, he has high blood pressure, which is just beyond me, right? Well, the, he, they're actually doing cardiac stress tests and stuff on this eight-year-old, and they're, they're wanting, guess what, guess what the solution to that is? Blood pressure medication. They're going to be putting an eight-year-old on blood. So we're trying to call and say there's another way. You obviously, you don't have to do that. Last resort, but the problem is, is it, it, it's getting crazy, and it's getting earlier out there. The, what is happening now? I'm not anti medication, but I'm anti, so to speak, in, in how it's used for people because it's not really used for what it's supposed to be used for. It should be an emergency intervention to save your life from dying, a crisis. Thank goodness we have that. So it does work in, in that life and death scenario. But like getting you healthy, medication never does that. It's never been intended to do it, but yet we're taking a system that's meant for emergency care and we're trying to build people's health with it. It'll never work. And that's why we as a country take 70 to 75% of the world's medication. We are 5% of the world's population. Explain that. And if drugs were the answer to getting healthy, we'd have the healthiest kids in the world. Do we? No, we actually, the British Medical Journal, and it's not just Americans, we, we're, we're kind of the unhealthiest of the, of the big countries, but worldwide, they're saying that the generation of kids now, so my, my kids' ages, the, it, the rate we're going, they will not outlive me and my wife. Like, we won't, they won't outlive their parents. It's crazy. It's just, I just don't, I don't get that. We got to stop. This is Ritalin, by the way. It's the fancy name for it. That has gone up 700% prescribing since 1990. Chronic use of antibiotics. Every time there's a sniffle or a, you feel a sickness, you go to the, you know, the doctor, emergency room, antibiotic panel, antibiotic panel, antibiotic panel, boom, boom, boom. And the problem is, is unless it's a bacterial infection, that is doing nothing for you or your kids. That's actually destroying a lot of the gut flora every time you take a hit of those because they're for bacterial, not viral infections. 90% of ear infections are viral, but guess what? Everybody that goes for an ear infection gets put on what? Antibiotics. It's just expected right now. So it's not really a scientific thing. It's more of a tradition. That's just what they do. And so we have to start understanding this stuff. You got, you got, to, you got to know the information. Um, kids today get 49 doses of 14 vaccines before age six. They can get, they can actually it, it do up to 12 doses possible in, in one visit. Just imagine all that getting put into the bloodstream. So, kids, if we don't watch out, it's already, it's already, I would say not epidemic. I'd say it's pandemic. It's, it's worldwide. Right now, one in 10,000 kids diagnosed with cancer annually, one in 64. This actually, this number, this number is actually lower, which is not good. One in 64 children, autistic. One in 33 diagnosed with bipolar. One in 10 diagnosed with ADHD. One in nine clinical depression. These are just kids. One in five learning disability. One in five mental disorder. One in four anxiety disorder. One in three don't sleep good. One in two will be diagnosed with any mental disorder. It's nuts. So, no, think about it. You should say wow. And you think about this. The, the number one market, the number one market for a drug company is not adults. It's kids. It is, it is, I would love to say it's an untapped market. No, it's been tapped. But there's so much more they can do to put kids on drugs. That's the goal. The goal, you don't understand. I'm not talking about doctors. Doctors, there's great doctors out there. I'm talking about drug companies. It's a whole different ballgame. And if you think it's not about trying to get you on their drugs for life, you are, you're living in another world. I'm sorry. That's the goal is to get you or your kids on drugs for life. That's the goal. It's money. It's scary. So you ever see that? You ever fly? I know y'all, you probably all fly at one point. But you know that, that, that point when they explain about if the oxygen tanks come down and you're in a, such a calm, you're not panicking because the plane is going down, you can actually get the oxygen mask over who first? The adult. 
not the kid first, the adult. Then help the child. Same principle when it comes to what we're talking about health-wise. We got to get we got to get the oxygen mask on parents first. We got to get parents to start changing and getting healthy because healthy parents is going to come out with a lot healthier functioning kids. But it flips. There's there's a truth to this. There's a truth to this. Very unhealthy adults. Guess what? Guess what that equates to with their kids. They're going to grow up in the same lifestyle their parents do. So the parents aren't exercising. Parents aren't taking care of their bodies. They're not eating very well. They're on a lot of medications. Guess what the kids are going to grow up thinking is normal? Exactly what the parents do. And if you don't think that's true, that's called lifestyle. It is not genetics. It is not genetics. Say it's not genetics. It's not genetics. It's lifestyle. Your kids, and you know if you have them, oh my gosh, just with four and one, they're so observant. And they read you. They read me and my wife like a book. Like they know, you don't think they're paying attention. They are watching you like hawks, I'm telling you. And they pick up on what you do. And guess what? They, and you ever wonder this? This is funny because like, like I'll see this, I'll see myself and my son and it's crazy or or my daughter even. I see it because they'll do something I do. Like they'll make, especially my daughter because my daughter's like a mini me. Like it's it's funny. Um, But she'll do, she'll, she'll do like this facial expression. I'm like, and Shanna's like, oh my gosh, you do that. Like, that, that's you. It, have you ever noticed that, like, with kids? Well, it's the same thing with, with other habits, like eating and stuff like that. It's just like that. We're just, we're just having a, a blast seeing that. But I'm telling you, they pick up on what you do. So, so if maybe health is not the most important thing to you right now, make sure that it starts becoming the most important thing. You only got one life. Don't live it, don't live it in misery with health because living in bad health is just not, it's just not, it's not the way to live, you know? And, and improve that quality of life. But if you're making changes, simple ones we'll talk about, it's going to, your kids will start to do it. Maybe not the first day, but they will see you do it enough. They'll start to do what mommy and daddy do. I think that's so huge. And if you have older kids, same thing. Older kids, it's okay. You can start making changes with them too. It, it, it's never too late. It really isn't. We do these essentials and, and, and we want families, like my big goal in with what I do is not to see, in, 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 it can't be real with you, it's not to see somebody for whatever, four, five, six months of corrective adjusting and then I never see them again. I hate that. I, I, I can't tell you how much I hate that. I hate it. And it happens. It, it does. We, we help a lot of people. What I love, I love creating relationships with patients seeing us help them, help their kids, help their grandkids. And we, we do see a lot of that too. I love that. I love that. I would, I would much rather take care of the family for as long as I can. That, that's my ultimate goal. Well, we want our families to, to implement this. If we can get you to implement this, you are so ahead of the game when it comes to the overall health of your family. Talking with mindset. I've said a little bit of mindset and the mindset we want to get to is, well, okay, so health, it's not, it's not the, the, the absence of medications is what makes you healthy. It's not necessarily so. It's, it's your body working at 100%. That is health. So how, how do we think about, how do we get to 100 or close to it, that, that optimum health? Well, we got to start with what runs your health. That's this essential. That's your nerve supply. That's your brain. That's your spinal cord and the nerves. That's what runs your body. That's not me saying it. That's just anatomy. That's how your body's made. Well, let's maximize that. Let's make sure your brain's talking to your body at 100%. Now we add in some nutrients because you need nutrients. No, you don't need just a supplement to take a supplement. You need nutrients because we, as a, as a country, are very deficient. Kids are among the most deficient out of Americans. It's not always the adult. It's the kids. And it's not, they can't, there's an effect to kids just like, like, I think everybody would in agreement on this. If you just fed your kid McDonald's every single day, you, they're not going to do good. Does that make sense? They're just not. They're going to be deficient in some key nutrients they are not going to get from a Big Mac, right? That's right? Okay, so we're good on this. Well, a lot of people don't think that way. A lot of people think, well, my kids can just eat whatever they eat because they're young. They'll burn it off. No, it's not true. That creates problems. It creates problems especially long-term. We're going to talk about deficiencies. That's where this comes in. How do we get the body back to normal? Say normal. Normal. We just want to function in normal because you know what? Your body's smarter than me and you and everybody that put together. It knows how to work. We just need to not interfere with it. So got to get oxygen into our body. We got to move. 
kids aren't doing this this much these days. They're all on computers and electronics. It, it is it is it is ridiculous. They don't, they're taking this out of a lot of schools as well. They don't exercise the kids. They don't. It's crazy. We got a detox. I used to not even talk about that ten years ago with kids. You know that I never talked about detoxing. I just didn't. We have to do that now. It's just accumulation of CRAP that not only we put in our bodies, but it's affecting kids. So point in fact, if you have kids that are 10 and younger, understand what they are coming into this world. They're coming into food that was never meant for them to eat. It's genetically modified food. It's food that has so many stinking chemicals in it that it's really not food. It's a science experiment. That's what they're doing. That's what they come into now. It's not like it was when, when I, even I was little. At least the food was food. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that now. They're coming into that. They're coming in right from birth, man. They're coming in, shot, 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 shot. Because God didn't make your body to work normal without the shots. No, that's not true. It's not. We want to get into some things. Immune system destroyers. I think this is a good place to start because some it, hardest with kids with nutrition... Am I the only one that has a tough time with my son? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, be honest. It's okay. We're not bad parents if you, if you have a stubborn child with nutrition. It's not a bad parent. It's not. It's just kids are picky. My son, let me give you an example. Oh, I got plenty. Let me give you an example my son, Aiden. So my son um, does not eat fruit and vegetables. Whole. You're like, well, how do you give him nutrition, Dr. Wall? It is exhausting. I tell you, it's hard. So my son, he has three, he, he, I mean, for a food to enter his mouth and he, he eat it, he's got to pass three tests. Three. <laughs> I, no, I'm not kidding. The first test is the eyeball test. If it looks weird in any way, <laughs> it's not even going to go to the next test. And that's most food, which is tough. And then if it passes the eyeball test, it has to pass the smell test. So my son smells his food. And, and le- if it's something new, he smells it every time. And if it doesn't pass the smell test, that doesn't, nope, won't pass to the mouth test. That's the last test. And you know, we've had a lot of things pass the first two, but get to the mouth and does not like it. Just bleh. He, he, he spits it out. Even now, I'm like, dude, you don't have to spit it out. Just take it out of your, but he just, he just spits it out. <laughs> so he does. And I can't tell you how exhausting that has been for four years. My wife and me have stayed up and lost a lot of sleep over this. We're like, how is he not, like, how is he going to get his nutrition? How is he going to eat? And it's, it's been such a struggle. So when we find something that works, we do a ton of it. But the good thing is just because with our background, we're able to, to, to sneak things into his body without him knowing it. Does that make sense? It's weird. I don't know. uh, Maybe I'm speaking to the choir here, but it's weird to me. I'm like, you're just, that's just weird, dude. I'm like, eat the food. But so he gets that from his wife, from, from, from my wife's side, the family, not from me. My daughter is like me. My daughter just eats whatever I give her. And that's, that's so glorious. But we'll go back to my son. So how do we give him healthy fats? How do I give him vegetables? How do I give him fruit? Well, I, 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 I sneak it into smoothies. Our smoothie, oh my goodness, at our house, it is loaded. Like it is a meal. It's not, it's not just a, it's a meal replacement because we're f- putting all this stuff in that he needs and I'm blending it up to where he doesn't even taste it. He just drinks it. So that's one way. And literally every morning, like I would love to do just, you know, he does bananas. He's just started doing bananas. Thank the Lord. He just up and, you know, we put stuff on his plate every day. We're like, here, try this, try this. And he, you know, but, but by, we're still praying that it just, so he just does, like the banana one day he's just like I'll start eating the banana we're just like hallelujah like oh my god like praising Jesus like thank you he just ate something but 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 for the most part we we, we smoothie it up that's what we have to do he will eat um, we give him a lot of a lot of uh, vegetables through bars like for some reason he'll he'll go through a bar so we have to make sure that bar has to be pretty awesome. He'll eat the essential bars that we have in the office. He downs those. Those have tons of health and, and, and stuff that you never really get in a bar anyways, but we, we, he eats that. Vegetables is through pouches. Seriously, like I, we give him vegetable pouches. I'm like, I don't, you suck it down. Like I don't care how it gets down, but get it down you know, in the body. I give him plant protein and smoothies. Like there, but but I've, we, it, it has been, I'm telling you, exhausting. Like I feel like a chemist. I'm like, how am I gonna get this stuff you know, in him? But, but that's what it is. So when our, with our daughter, who just, I just put a green bean and she'll just, 
just eat a green bean, eat broccoli, eat cauliflower, eats, uh, eats, eats anything, tomatoes, anything vegetable, doesn't matter, just eats it. Eats it, loves it. And I'm like, okay, something is, this is just, this is too easy. Like, what, what, what are we setting me up for, you know? But it's just, there, there's things when it comes to food, I, I just, so I'd share with you some of the struggles I have. Hopefully that came out, because there are struggles. But there's things that we want to stay away from, not just as adults, but with kids especially. Things that we call disease feeders. Because lo and behold, these things create problems. And if we don't watch out, this can be literally a daily thing with our kids, especially the picky ones. The first one, sugar. Second one, bad fats. Third one, bad type of meats. And then obviously, kids aren't really out in the sun this much. Oh, and when they are, just like adults, guess what we're caking on our kids? To block the, the benefit of the rays. We're blocking it. What's wrong with sugar? Is it that bad? Yes, it is. Causes inflammation, creates acidic body environment. What does that mean? That means the body's acidic. It's pro-inflammation. It's not alkaline. Pardon me, it's not alkaline. Uh, sugar's been linked to mood alterations, weight loss, resistance, and cancer. I'm going to tell you something. There has been a very big increase in, in, in diagnoses of mood with kids and also with weight loss resistance. I mean, I mean really, we, we see, I talked about in our last workshop, with, with, with di- diabetes diagnoses in kids, it used to be 15 years ago that only 3% of the diabetes diagnoses with children was type 2. Now it's over 50% of kids that get diagnosed with, with diabetes. It's type 2. It's adult. It's supposed to be adult. It ain't adult anymore. It, it's kids. It's not adult onset. It's kids. So we're seeing this more and more and more. So how do we make changes? I want to make it simple. Say simple. Simple. Simple ways to do this. First one, let's start by how we cook food. Because this isn't changing what you normally do. This is just changing from one thing to another, a little bit better ingredient that's going to be uh, a lot more benefit nutrient-wise. Fat is wo- one way you want to start doing that. So, so for instance, in, if you're cooking food in like vegetable canola oil, you know, sunflower oil, stop cooking food in that stuff. That stuff's garbage. I mean, it's just straight up garbage. It's not healthy at all. It, it, it denatures the food. Right? So switch from something to like a coconut oil or switch to something like an avocado oil or, or a grapeseed oil. Um, olive oil, you just can't high heat olive oil. Um, once you get above like 120, it starts steaming. It does denature, but it, it's a low heat oil or just like a dressing. I think it's really great in salads. So you can use olive oil to, to a point, but better, this not only is, is not uh, rancid oil, this still has a lot of healthy fats. It's not omega-3, but it's like, you know, um, 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 monounsaturated fat. So it's still good for brain function. Brain function, very important, not just with adults, but with kids because they're developing. We want to stay away from the Franken food. I mean, literally 140, 150 pounds of additives are put in our food supply. That's scary when you think about it. And if you look at, so, so let me show you. So what do I mean by this? This is a Kraft Lunchable. Remember Lunchables? Do you remember that? I ate a lot of that when I was little. Do you remember Lunchables? They're so good. They weren't food. That's why they, were, they had all this tasting on it. This, do you see this? This is, so just in case you don't know, this is a ham and American sub Lunchable. So this bad boy has 21 grams of sugars in it. It's got 49 grams of carbs. That's going to turn into what too? Sugar and a lot of it. So you give this to your, your child at lunch and you wonder why they go Voo! through the roof and then they have a big crash and they're falling asleep in class. And, and then the teacher's saying they're not paying attention or they're, they're, just, they're just not interested. No, they're jacked up on this. Now, if you look at this, this seriously is the ingredient list of everything. This looks like, a, this is a thesis of the wrong stuff. This is like a science experiment. I can't pronounce half the stuff on there. But there's a lot of sugars, there's a lot of dyes, there's a lot of artificial sugars, there's a lot of rancid fat. But you, you do this, you un- wonder how we get so much stuff into our body. There's also wheat in there, so if you have gluten intolerance, that's, you don't want to be eating that. But, but this, is, this is a strawberry milkshake from Burger King. If you read what's in it, there's no strawberries, there's no milk in the milkshake. Think about that. Now, I'm not saying milk's great. I'm not, I'm not that's a whole other topic. But there's just nothing of, that it's called. There's nothing of those two words in this. It, it's, it's all these different chemicals. 
and, and the chemicals actually, they have a chemical in it to make it look like a strawberry, to make it red, right? But it, I, it, it's not worth the treat. Like the kids, the kids have been good, awesome. Give them something healthier than that. There's plenty of options. A good option, that if, 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 uh, seriously, they have, uh, they have there, there's, there, there's organic, you know, ice creams, there's organic, there's Halo's a real good one as well. It's, it's, it's gluten-free ice cream, literally with low calories. It's, it's not, it's made with better ingredients. So there's a nutrient benefit out of it. There have ice creams called Arctic Zero, where the, literally the entire pint is like 150 calories. And it's, there's, there's just, it's just, there's no chemicals in it. So there's, there are options out there, but this is not an option we want to do. But you know how many kids I see from Heights High School come to McDonald's um, during lunchtime? Guess, they, they ain't walking around with, with a salad. You know what they're eating? They're eating this, they're eating burgers, they're eating french fries. I mean, they do that daily. God, I did it when I was in high school. I'm not, I was bad too. In college, I would, I would seriously, I gained, I gained weight not in a good way, in college, because I would go to Taco Bell at night when I was studying, and I would go, like, seriously, that, that's when they had the drive through they, op- they opened it up till one and two in the morning. Like, that's how, you know, I'm not that old, but that, that was when I was in college. That's when they did that. And so guess what? I would eat a lot of late night, and it wasn't salads. It was bad food. But we, we do it. We, we, don't, we don't understand. I didn't understand how bad it was for me. Gluten, this is so big because this is probably one of the, other than shellfish or peanuts, this is go, it's right up there with sensitivity to not just adults, but to kids. This is, gonna, this is epidemic right now. It, it's kind of sneaky. You've heard of gluten-free and stuff. Well, understand gluten, well, what really is it? Well, it's a protein that's found in wheat, barley, and rye. It's also very similar in oats. Now, some oats are gluten-free, but most aren't, so you still really watch it. But the problem is, is so much stuff that we eat, especially if you go out to eat, has, has gluten in it. You'd be in, in shock. Like, for instance, there is a, there is a, a really good Mediterranean. I love this place called Terra Mediterranean Grill. Love it. You might have you've eaten there. It's, it's the bomb. It's really good, so you know. Um, and, and, and for the most part, their food is pretty healthy. They have a lot of gluten-free stuff. So I'm, I did not pay much attention when I would eat their saffron rice, which normally would not contain gluten, but it's not. It's a, they use a wheat base in it, so it actually has gluten in it. And I would always wonder, like, why do I feel really bad after I eat the rice? Like, that's just weird, right? I'd feel terrible. Well, it's because it's loaded with gluten in it. And the reason I talk about this, this is something like with me, I, I'm actually not just sensitive, I'm intolerant to gluten. I, I'm f- f- completely intolerant. And, and my wife's sensitive to it, but I'm, I'm intolerant. So I, just a little bit, it, 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 it's like gas on a fire with me. So I can't do it at all. But I'm telling you, this is something that's really big. So, so one of the most common food allergies, um, the sensitivity to this, so, so it can lead to neurological and mental health effects. Now this is big. It can actually trigger autoimmune responses throughout your nervous system. It can affect your thyroid gland. So if you're wondering, like, why, why, why is my thyroid gland, maybe the testing shows it's okay, but yet you're weight loss resistant or something, I'm going to tell you, or digestively, you just, certain foods you eat, it's just like a tire, like you cannot digest it. I'm going to tell you, there's a highly chance that, that you're sensitive to gluten, maybe even intolerant to it. But you don't have to have celiac disease to be intolerant to gluten. That's, that's kind of the knock. It doesn't have to get that far. But it can produce narc- uh, like, a, like a narcotic effect on the brain. That's what it can do, okay? Changes in, in brain perfusion or blood flow to the brain. So it is a big thing. And, and just to give you an idea on this, there are so many options that you can get that do not have gluten in it. If, if, if you were to pick the choice, I would just try to get foods that don't have it in it. I really think that's a smart move. It's kind of like, trying to just lower your sugar intake, try to lower your gluten intake too. And there's easy ways to do that. They're really more than now than ever. So here's the good news. Like if you, if you like bread, if you like muffins, if you like cookies and crackers, you can find all of those. You can make them yourself. You can use like Bob's Red Mill. These are all grain-free um, um, flours that you can cook and bake with. Seriously, and they taste really good. But there's actually, if you look on the back, 
There's a lot of very good nutrition in there. It's not like white bread. It's not, it's not like that. But you can make, you know, flax bread, cupcakes, flaxseed muffins, flax cereal, almond flour muffins, cookies, nut seed cereals, nut seed crackers and breads. There's Ezekiel bread as well, which is a non-grain, you know, bread. Th- those are like a sprouted. Um, what's good about those is they, they don't contain gluten in them. They're giving you a health benefit, and they're easy ways to kind of still give kids if they like a sandwich or they like a, you know, you, you could do a healthier option than just a straight up, you know, peanut butter jelly sandwich on white bread. You can do a better and give them nutrition. So there's, there's ways. That makes sense? There's a lot of ways out there. Now, now here's the other thing too. Not everything that says gluten-free is good. Oh, can I please tell you that? Do not assume that if it says gluten-free, it is healthy. It just might not have gluten in it. So what am I saying? I'm saying read labels, read on the back. Okay, there, there's a lot of good gluten-free stuff out there, but look at ingredients. If it does look like a science experiment, guess what you shouldn't do? Eat it, put it in you, that's huge. Another thing as well with milk. Now, let's just get to the obvious thing. Were we ever intended to drink cow's milk, another species? We weren't, I know, this, this is tough because some people just love their cow's milk. They don't, I used to love it too, back, back in the day. So I'm not trying to start an argument with anybody on their cow's milk. Love your cow's milk, that's great. Just get it raw or get it, get it at least where it, 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 it's, it's not containing certain things. We'll, we'll get to that. But just on a big picture, like breast milk is for babies, cow's milk is for what? Baby cows, Right? And so the thing about this is there are proteins in just cow's milk that we don't really digest very good. Casein is one of them. Um, <clears throat> what, what are the dangers of the body? Well, a lot of people can break this stuff down. It, it, you see the kind of the chain. It goes down to peptides. It should continue to get broken down into more amino acids to use. But if this is not broken down properly, and that is a lot of people, they don't do good with casein, it can cause a histamine reaction. So what is that? That's like an allergic reaction. Histamine is kind of like if, you, if your nose is stopped up or if your nose is running, you're coughing up, you're having a, a reaction. It can cause that. These peptides can also react with opioid receptors in the brain, thus creating the opioid effect like heroin and morphine in the brain. Think about that. Isn't that crazy? But, but it can do that. The region of the brain most affected is the temporal lobe, speech and auditory integration. That's really big with kids growing up. I think it's just easier to, to not like see, well, to take a chance, it's just there's better options. There really are. You have almond milk, you have, you have um, um, cashew milk, you have coconut milk. Easier options. They're always better digestible because they don't have uh, lactose in it either. A lot of people don't do good on lactose. It's a, it's a sugar derivative that's in cow's milk. Um, and it's just it, it, the proteins aren't in there. The, the, the hormones aren't in there. It's just all the stuff's not in almond milk and, and, um, and, um, and coconut milk and that stuff. It's easier, to, easier digested, and there's, there's better, healthier fat ratios in there, too. Might not be as much protein as cow's milk, but guess what? You can get your protein in other areas. You really can. It's not that much in cow's milk. I know this is, this is tough, especially if you love cow's milk. Um, <clears throat> how do you spot hidden sources in the grocery store? Now, now it, dairy-free, so if, even, if, even in almond milk, there's some bad almond milks out there that have casein in it. It's just not called casein. It's called sodium caseinate, calcium caseinate. It says milk proteins under ingredients. It's usually casein. Fortified proteins, milk solids. Now, those are ingredients you might be familiar with when you look at your milk. But if you see that in there, it's going to have the, that protein in there. So you would, I would rather you not, not actually put that in your body. Just there's, there's better sources. Now, the other reason I like, I just, this is me. If you love cow's milk, I'm not going to fight you on that. Love your cow's milk. Go, but get, go get raw milk. Now, that's not in a grocery store. You gotta go to a farm. There's some work that's that's entailed to get better sources of cow's milk or goat's milk. You gotta go to a farm typically. You're not gonna find it at the grocery store. But when you have little kids, and to make life a little simpler, it's kind of easier to fix, you know, to almond milk or it just and, and, and it's not much of a difference in taste. Just the milk, the almond milk, uh, coconut. Milk, it's a little thinner, um, a little bit thinner. Okay. Brain builders. If you can get more, like I count the addition rule. How do we add in more good stuff on a daily basis? Not not like on a week, but on a daily basis. Well, <clears throat> these are really good foods to start adding in um, 
for, for different reasons. Um, salmon, obviously, and, and then all the, all the different nuts. And one of the reasons I really like um, the essential bars that, that we carry is because it has a lot of different nuts. It has a lot of almonds in it, uh, which is a great thing because almonds have those healthy omega fats in it. Your, your raw nuts and, and cashews and pecans, those contain healthy fats. Again, brain function. Salmon, same thing. Omega-3, very high. Um, something that we do with my son, we actually will take chia seeds. I should put that on there. Chia seeds. Awesome. Other than salmon and like sardines, chia seeds is the highest plant source of omega-3 fats. Straight up. And so something that, that I do to make sure my son gets this every day, I do not just one, I'll do like two tablespoons of chia seeds and because we I blend shakes for my wife, me, and my son together. But we I know it's a lot. No, it doesn't. We got a Vitamix, man. You can put a tree down to Vitamix. Get get a get a get a good blender. You, well, that's the thing. Get a good blender. Um, um, we got a Vitamix, and we got it specifically because my son, we had a Ninja before. I'm not knocking Ninja brand. Well, please, I'm going to get in trouble here, y'all. It's just, uh, sorry, I don't, I, I'm not knocking Ninja brand. I'm telling you this, though. We use Ninjas for a long time, and every year I have to get a new Ninja because we just, we'd wear it out. That's how, we, we blend a lot. So... But the other thing is the ninja would blend it pretty good, but it would still leave the, the so my son, he, he, he didn't want it. He stopped drinking shakes. He didn't like it. And so we, we, we were at Costco and they had a Vitamix on sale. And I'm like, I'm not going to get one. I'm not. And then the guy sold me on it because he blended up stuff that I, I, I know would be chunky. And, uh, and it was smooth as, 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 it's like nothing's there. So we, I throw a bunch in, but we got that for my son, made that investment. Cause I'm like, you're drinking this stuff. I'm getting it in you. But the, but it's loaded with omega fats, omega three fats, uh, broccoli huge for, for not just protein, but also for, for, um, it's like a detoxer. It helps kind of cleanse out cells of the body. Free range uh, eggs, that's really big. We, we typically, and we typically do a lot of eggs for, for dinner. We do breakfast for dinner a lot at, at my house. So we'll do a lot of, we'll do, you know, a lot of organic eggs. We'll do turkey bacon. You know, my son, he, he does have no problem with like meat. He's a carnivore for sure. He eats meat all the time. But we can get some healthy fats in, in, in better raised and sourced proteins and, and animal, you know, meats. Um, if it's better source, it's going to have higher o- a healthy fat content. So that, that's just brain food really helps. Um, and, and a lot of this stuff, seriously, you can take spinach. <coughs> you can be blending that in um, to a smoothie. You can blend it in. And it really doesn't taste bad if you, if you blend it in with some you know, protein and stuff like that. Um, so meals, again, just ideas, just so if you're like, what do I do? Well, this is a pretty close example to what we do with 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 us. Um, now I'll tell you this, the, the, the breakfast smoothie, uh, instead of one cup, you're going to probably want to do a little bit more than one cup. Like with, with all of us, cause my son wants, he has a shake, then he has an after shake. That's what we call it. It's after shake. Um, we'll do 40 ounces of almond milk. So we do a lot, but it's for three people. So we do a lot. Um, we'll put scoops of blueberries. Uh, uh we do organic blueberries, organic cherries, sometimes strawberries. Um, we do we do almond butter. I, I like the Justin brand. I really do. There, there. This is good too. The Marantha brand is is more of a raw. It's just there's good almond butter options. To a couple scoops of that, <coughs> a couple scoops of protein powder, um, and, and then we blend it up. Oh, and then I add chia seeds in there. I'll add chia seeds and just we blend it up. And, and I'm telling you, it is a is a meal. It's very dense to the point where, like my son or even me, if I have like a normal meal for breakfast. I am starving by by lunch, but when I make this shake and, and drink it, like it, I could I could actually I don't, but I could skip lunch. Like I'm that filled. Like my lunch is not big because I'm still full from breaking this stuff down. It's a lot of fat. It takes your body a while to break it down, so it's very filling. Really great for kids going to school. It's really great because it's filling. They're not starving and, and tempted to you know run to McDonald's by by my office to to go eat. So lunch, another big one. <clears throat> You can get raw almond butter and, 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 and a little bit more of an organic jelly sandwich on Ezekiel bread. Again, th- that's not going to have gluten in it. It's going to be a better option um, for them. Apple slices. There's so many things. You know, snacks you can do. Uh, the essential bars, those are awesome snacks at the office. You can do like ants on a log, get like a celery stick, fill it with almond butter. You can do some, 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 some raisins on it. You can do different things. You can do some nuts on it as well or some, some chia seeds. Um, something really good too. 
you can actually do like fillet yogurt, which is which is a more of a like a, a fat, you know. But it, but there's there's not a lot, there's, there's there's single digit sugar in there, which is rare for yogurt. But you can take that, get the plain, right? You can take that. You can add stevia powder, not the liquid powder. You want to blend, you know, add a couple couple. Um, um, teaspoons of, of stevia powder and then add in some berries and you can add in a scoop of actually like the whey protein uh, vanilla or chocolate and then just just whip it up and it, it's it's seriously it's like a, it's like not I wouldn't say it's like a pudding it's what it is but it's delicious and so to my son he just thinks oh it's pudding this is this is this is sweet it's it's, it's but there's a lot of <clears throat> he's getting a lot of you know amino acids and fat and healthy protein <clears throat> he's getting that stuff in his body so there you, you got to be a little creative but that's why we have a book we have we have a nutrition book um that's really good when, when it comes to desserts and stuff how to make stuff and and so we have we have a nutrition book which which if you don't have it you should get that before you leave it's just loaded with recipes and ideas and most of the stuff in there is pretty quick doesn't take very long to make i mean you can whip up that yogurt <clears throat> if you have the ingredients it takes you know two minutes to whip it up. It's pretty quick. So just little ideas to help with that. Another thing that we're seeing though is, ah, man, just kids aren't exercising these days. And, and it's, it's, it's scary, but it's not even in a lot of schools. They've kind of taken that aspect out, which is really detrimental to a child's <clears throat> health. So much brain function is, is it comes from being outside, being in nature, like actually like doing, we call it exercise, but it's just kids being kids, having fun, running around and playing. You know, something that, that um, people don't really get is with, with all the kids that are being labeled, which I think is just uh, so wrong in, 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 in many ways, but kids that might be hyper, kids that might have, they, they might literally have like a legitimate, you know, ADHD, um, I think that's so misdiagnosed and overdiagnosed. Anyways, but another story. Um, but you see these kids, look, <clears throat> or, or even adults that are on depression medication, that they have, you know, bipolar, they have, they're, they're, they, they say they have a chemical imbalance or something like that. It's not. It's just a lot of them don't exercise or they don't do it properly. This is a study I think is really big because the, the number one group of people that are prescribed antidepressants right now are, are middle-aged moms. Did you know that? That's the big, that's the big group. And don't get me, don't even get me started on how hard it is to be a mom. Oh my gosh, like that's the hardest job ever. Like I would, I would easily never switch with my wife. I'm like you, you, because it's hard. Like I've, I've seen it's hard, so I get it. <coughs> but there's a study um, not too long ago done where they actually had three groups of people, and everybody in this study um, was diagnosed with clinical depression or, or bipolar, one of those two, and then they were they were given. And, uh, three treatments and, and, it, and a group of them did exercise three times a week for 45 minutes each time they had another group that gave they just gave them you know like a Zoloft um, and then another, another group they actually did exercise and they did they did the medication use and what they found is actually pretty cool the 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 two groups the group here in 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 um in in was, I think it was three it was three weeks or three months I think it was three months it's a little bit longer study, three months. And these two groups, they both had patients that actually saw some change. They saw favorable change, but it was less than 50%. And then the other 50%, they, they, they could not get off the medication. And they stopped at the group that was exercising and doing medication, they stopped exercising after three months. They, did, they didn't keep it up, and they just relied on the medication. But the group that exercised uh, three times a week and didn't do drugs, in three months, they, they not only m had a bigger, it was 70% of that group off the meds and like weren't suffering from the symptoms of depression that they had had prior. But also, they did a follow-up study. It was about a year later, and that's the, everybody in that 70% group still was exercising because they made it part of their life. There's a big thing. So many things happen right here when you exercise. It's not all about the legs or the arms or the abs. It's about the brain. It charges your brain. We are meant to move. There's so many hormones that get released when we exercise, so I think that's huge. How do we make it fun? How do we make it for the family? It doesn't have to be, let's go to the 24-hour fitness. I'm not saying that. Not. It doesn't have to be like that. You can. Don't get me wrong. If you have older kids. But like with my son, 
I, like we just have fun you know a lot of times I'll, I'll come home and he wants to go for a walk I'm like yeah let's go sometimes I don't want to go for a walk I'll be honest sometimes I really don't because I've, I've already worked out in the morning I've already adjusted like you know 130 people I want to I just want to watch some TV but I don't <clears throat> we'll go for a walk and we'll go walk around the block and stuff and I'm like this is awesome because he's out walking around we're having fun we go to the park sometimes and by our house and 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 you know and he'll get in the swing I love that Go for a family walk. That's easy. Easy way to do exercise. So it's, not, it's, not, it's not really, it's just family time. Um, sports, great. Like, we'll be definitely putting Aiden in, in some sports uh, pretty soon. But, you know, martial arts, dance, there's other, you know, lessons. Like, I still consider these sports. They're very physical to do, but they're really great for brain function. At home fitness, so again, really big. They have they have these cool videos too, like with little kids, like with little infants. Like, you could do workouts with your infant, like you're, you're lifting it, because it's a workout. It's a workout. I had to carry my daughter, who's a lot bigger than my son was at, eight, at 17 months. I had to carry, I don't know what we were doing. Um, oh, we were, walking around, we were walking around the mall. And for some reason, I had her in, in this arm. And I, I, I swear, I only was holding her for about 20 minutes. And, and my arm was going numb. And I'm like, gosh, because it felt like it ripped my, like my bicep was all, it's like I've been doing curls with my daughter. <laughs> so there's ways, like, there's ways you can do this it doesn't have to be crazy. As a matter of fact, I say, I say like with T3, I think that is so cool to do and, and, and put that thing on at your house. Your kids will do it with you because they don't think it's working out. They think it's just having fun doing jumping jacks with mom or, or running in place with dad. Like my, my son is like, I'm like, hey, dude, let's do some push-ups. And, and he's like, because well, he wants to do push-up, but he can't. He's, he's more like a downward dog thing he's got going on. And I'm like, well, you can use your knees. It's okay to do the, the girl ones. And he's like, no, I want to do it this way. So he kind of, he, he, we're getting better. We're getting better. But it's four, you know, push-up. That's pretty hard to do. So I'm like, I'm like, well, let me show you how. I'm showing how. By the time I've like done like 30, 40 push-ups, and I'm kind of like, okay, let's just you do it. You know, like, like it's, 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 it's not even exercise, but it is. You don't think it is. So there's ways to do it. Take the stairs. Always take the stairs. Park very far away from wherever you're going and walk. I mean, these are just simple things. Family walk, bike rides, swims. Uh, this is, I'm telling you, they do not think that's exercise. They think that's just having fun with mom and dad. It really do. It's so big. But there's ways you can make it not about exercise, but getting that, that brain function. I think that's huge. Toxicity. Again, we used to not have to talk about this, but it's just too, it's just, there's too much junk that we get exposed to, not just in our food. You got the chemicals in our food, but, but just check the <clears throat> 70,000 chemicals are used commercially right now. 4 billion prescription drugs are ingested in the U.S. each year. That's crazy. Oh, EPA estimates that our homes are now five to 100 times more toxic than outdoor air. It's crazy, right? You guys ever watch that show Hoarders? You've ever seen Hoarders? If, nobody, if you've never seen that, raise your hand if you've never seen Hoarders. Yeah. Okay, so Google Hoarders or, or YouTube it. Watch one episode, you'll never watch it again. It is so, like, it, it's, it's, especially if you're a little OCD, you'll freak out. You'll have nightmares of, of Hoarders. But these people, they don't, they don't get rid of anything. And their house is so toxic. Like, a lot of them have to leave their house because it's so toxic with just just mold and mildew and all that stuff because they don't they don't clean their house oh oh you have no idea so bad it's such a bad show i think it's a scary show to me i like have nightmares on that um adhd a designer disease i think this one's really really big too it, it literally just check this out so did you know did you know that if your child has they do a, a questionnaire if you fill this questionnaire out and, and, and you answer six out of the nine questions listed here they will they, they're clinically diagnosed with ADHD now they can be diagnosed here's where it's crazy not only by a medical doctor but a lot of teachers can can also determine that and I love teachers my, my brother's a teacher I think they have the one of the hardest jobs other than mom and and they need to be compensated way more than they are but I do not think teachers need to make a diagnosis like that on any child, especially when it comes to be putting them on medication. But schools get kickbacks from how many kids are put on. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Matter of fact, they, when, they, when they first, when, in the 70s, when they first started making it about that, 200,000 kids were, were almost within the year put on medication. Now it's 20% of kids are, are on medication for ADHD. So check this out. Now, just think about this common sense, okay? Six of these, diagnosed with ADHD. Fidgets with hands or feet or squirms in the seat. 
How many kids you know do that? Everybody, because they're kids, right? Often leaves a seat in classroom or in situations where a remaining seat is expected. Yeah, do you have a four-year-old? I mean, just come on. So often runs about our clients excessively in situations. Yeah, how many times do you, do you, are you talking to an adult and your little child comes up and just hits you or something like that? Like, well, it's a child. It's what they do, right? Often has difficulty playing or engaging in leisure activities. It's often on the go because how many kids are, are not on the go, right? Often talks successfully. <laughs> I love this one because show me a child that just doesn't talk. I'm like, you know, just, you just don't see that too often. Uh, blurts out answers before questions. How often has difficulty awaiting turn. Often interrupts or intrudes on others. That could be anybody's kid. That could be anybody's kid, yeah. When I was growing up, everybody I hung out with as a kid, all my, all my guy friends, we'd all been on ADHD medicine because that's what we did. We did that. Yeah, just being, being kids? kids? Just being kids? Mm-hmm. It's crazy, but we need, it's just kids. Now, it's just, the problem, check this out. This is one of the most common drugs put on kids with this is Ritalin. Now, it may cause long-term ch- I'm telling you, it, it does. It's, it's not good. The, the, the changes that it does in the brain are not good long-term. Um, the changes look similar to those seen with other stimulants, such as amphetamine and cocaine, at least in rats. So this team at Buffalo did studies on, on rats in their brain, and they were given rats Ritalin, and they, had, they saw in the brain studies that it had similar effects on the brain like cocaine. The, they're very, and if you don't, they're, they're very addictive medications. They, they absolutely are. And they've been told, they've been downplayed so much. Now that bill has already been, you know, prosecuted so many lawsuits. And, and the end result of this is those drugs that are put for kids, they have black box warning labels on all of them with skull and crossbones. You guys get that? Like these drugs, they, they, don't, they don't maybe, they, they, they have been proven to increase suicidal, homicidal thoughts in kids. Every school shooting since Columbine, guess what the kids have been on? Uh, well, a, a, a medication for the brain, brain-altering medication. Every, look it up. Every single shooting, every one, they're on something. It, it's, it's coincidence. There's not a coincidence. I mean, I mean or it's not just luck. There's, there's, there's a reason that the, the, the brain stru- is doing that. Um, it's crazy. And you ever thought about this too when we get to that? It's why, especially with kids, why is it that you, like one child, and you might be thinking this now, it's like, okay, well, I grew up and I did all this, this, and this, and that turned out okay. Well, think about this. How come like one child can get, you know, the, the 49 different, you know, doses of 14 vaccines and, and they, they seem perfectly fine, and then you have this one child that gets one shot and they have a big reaction to it or they regress into an autistic or a spectrum. Like, how does that happen? Or better, another one, how come, you, you all know these people, right? These, especially the kids, like the parents giving them McDonald's every day. How could they do that every day? And then the kid's not getting sick. They're not, you know, they're not gaining weight. Like, they're, they're, they, they rarely get sick. And you have this other child who's, you know, like gluten-free and organic and non-dairy and, and they get sick all the time. It's frustrating, especially for parents. You try, you think you're doing the right stuff. It, it's all about the nervous system. That's what it comes down to. Because the way your body's created, your nervous system is, is basically the system that's there to help your body adapt to stress. Physical, chemical, and emotional. Your nerves are what guides that. It's mission control. It really is. It is, the, it is what runs your body. It what runs your child's body. It's the first symptom to form, or first system, not symptom, system to form when, when your children were, and you were just a bunch of cells. First thing that forms is the spinal cord and brain. And you can go, like food and stuff, that's all important. So is water. All that's important. But you have to start with your nurse first. That is the most important thing. It is, especially with kids. I, I want to tell you something. Like when it comes to if you don't know what your spine and nerves regulate, well, you have bones that surround your spinal cord, just like your skull protects your brain so it's not damaged. And you have holes for the nerves to come out of the bones and go to your body parts, your organs, your cells, your tissues. 
So when your spine is, is in the right position, these holes are really big, very simple. And the nerves go out, they, they feed these areas. This is, an, you have, the, if you're a guest as well, you have an example of a nerve chart in your packet. It's in there, look at it. It shows the entire spinal column, every single segment, and where these segments go, these are organs, these nerves run. And this on the far right shows when, when the bones, for some reason, and there's a million reasons, get stuck out of position, they subluxate. When there's pressure on the nerve like this, like it's still firing, but it's not firing good like the others. This, wherever that nerve goes to, you'll see these symptoms show up. People have no idea that most of the symptoms they're dealing with is originating from their spine. They think it's uh, something else. They think it's genetics. They think it's you know a, a lack of nutrition. Don't get me wrong. Eating good is good to do. I'm not saying don't eat good. I'm not. I have a degree in nutrition. I think it's very important. But what I think is more important, if I cut the nerve in half that goes to your colon, does it matter how good I, you eat? It's not going to work. And if it's getting squeezed, it doesn't matter so much how, mu how good you eat. It's still not going to work at 100%. So still eat good. But, but that needs to be addressed. How does this happen? Not from a trauma. It, it definitely can. I mean, it, it definitely can. Trauma can do it very fast. But 80% of the time, it's lifestyle. Now, I'm going to tell you something, too. If, if This is really big. The birthing process. Birthing process can be the very first time the child has a subluxation. This is a C-section delivery. And I'm not kidding. It, not all doctors do it that way. But a lot still do. I, I actually got, I, I got to see the video of my niece was born C-section. They had to do C-section. And I saw them. I'm telling you, you guys see me adjust in the office. This was harder than one of my adjustments on the neck. I just, bam, pulled out by the neck. And my niece, her, she could not, like, I'm watching the video and my knees just got weak. So I'm just like, oh my God, How, I can't believe they did that. And, and she couldn't turn her neck to the left for three days and it was still swollen so when we were able to get we got out of the hospital we were able to, to get to get to adjust London at her house at, at, at Matt's house and adjusted it, for the first time we were able to adjust her she she started she could turn her head she couldn't turn it to the left she finally turned her head to the left but but couldn't do it thank God we were able to adjust because that would have been going on for a long time you know so like like just with that my son my son if you don't know my son's story, um, um, my son was born from birth. Um, he came early. He's, he's preemie, so he's four, a little over four weeks early. And so we had to go to the hospital by law, not by choice, but by law. And we went there, and they did an awesome job because, you know me, I, I was like the last place I wanted to be was there with no paperwork filled out on anything, right? No preparation. But we were there, and, and I remember this vividly because my, my wife, she had a hard time delivering Aiden. Like he just, what we found out was we thought her water broke, but it didn't break all the way. And so when she was trying to push Aiden out, he was getting stuck. And so the nurses, because the OBGYN was never there, he came the next day. So we had some awesome nurse practitioners and midwives that were nurse midwives that were there. That's why we went to this hospital in Cleburne, which is an hour away. So if you're dilating and we're driving an hour, do you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? That's not fun. So this was, my wife did it really good. She's so tough, I couldn't have done it. But we, we drove to, to Cleburne. And the nurses delivered my son. They did awesome. They didn't touch his neck. But just the force of, of Shanna trying to get him out he came out and collapsed lung. His left lung did not inflate, which I, if you've ever seen that in a child, it's freaky. It's scary. And in its course, I'm going, what is going wrong? Like, we did everything right. Why is this happening? It wasn't anybody's fault. It's just the, he just got kind of stuck in, in the, the birth canal. And his little bone, because he was only five pounds, he's a little skin and bones guy, he's preemie, right? He, he needed more bake time in the oven. And his little, his little neck, as small as it was, his, his left side, his first bone in his neck, this bone right here, right, right here, see how it's wider than all the others? This bone was just stuck, stuck out. And so they put him under the heat lamp, they cut the cord real early, they, they, they went into nurse mode, and I respect that, it was... Basically, they, were gonna, they wanted to fly him to Cook's so he had a better NICU. Because when you have this happen, if you don't know, it's called uh, allectasis. 
it's it's a week to two weeks for their lungs mature because he's a preemie before they have to put them on oxygen so to get those lungs mature so that that lung starts working on its own well the NICU at Cook's is better at the NICU in Cleburne they wanted to fly him there and so I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, just I had to process this all in like a few seconds, but it seemed like years because Shanna's out of it. She just had him. She's not, in, she's in La La Land, you know, and she doesn't even really know what's going on and they're going to take him away. And so she's here and he's going to be in, in an hour away. And I'm like, what do I got to do? Freaking out. And so they're under the heat lamp with him and the nurse physically tells me, yeah, if, if this doesn't change in, in five to 10 minutes, we're going to go on and get him out and get him going. Um, and of course I'm like, um, before you do that, let me check his neck. And she's like, no, no. And I'm like, yes. I didn't say yes. I said something else. I'm not going to say it. We're recording. But I said, yes, I want to see my son. Give me my son. And, and so I saw, I looked at him, felt his, his bone was out of place. And when we adjust an infant, it is not like an adult. It's very, very gentle. Matter of fact, it probably didn't look to the nurses like I did much. But we had him down. And what we did, what I did, was I put pressure to set it, just pressure. And then, and then we have an instrument, a little bit of instrument that I used as well called an activator we were adjusting. So I did both of those. And I, I don't know the exact time frame, <clears throat> maybe a minute, maybe two, but we saw his left lung start inflating and he never had to leave our room. Y- you guys don't understand, like they don't ever see that and, and it freaked him out a little bit. They gave him a bad APGAR score. Yeah, his foot also, just guys, his foot, his foot wasn't clubbed. They said it was clubbed, it wasn't. His foot was stuck this way, clubbed is going this way, but his foot was stuck out in black because it was just stuck. Like I'm telling you, like, I don't know, he got way up into like the ribs or something, but he was just stuck coming out, but his foot was black. His APGAR score was, was bad. And so I'm, I'm, I adjusted his whole spine, but I, his neck was the biggest thing. But I, uh, after he started breathing, I'm like, let me take a look at else. And I started adjusting his, his, started adjusting his foot. And the next day, his foot's it's normal skin color. And when the OBGYN came in to look at him, he thought he had the wrong file. He did. He goes, this, is, this, this isn't the right file. This file says club foot. And he had an APGOR score of like seven. Like his lungs are fine. Like what? So what happened? You know, so I had to talk to the, to, the, to the doctor and the pediatrician came and said the same thing. This isn't the same kid. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, this does not look like what this is describing. Well, thank goodness we were there to intervene from birth. So when I tell you it can happen at birth, it, ha- it happened to my son at birth. My daughter, whole different ballpark. Like, it was kind of nice. Like, we were expecting the worst, just gun shy, you know. But my daughter, we had at her house natural delivery I adjusted her I didn't get to adjust her within a second you know within minutes because my wife took her and she took her into the bathtub and did a little a soap bath with you know they kept the core all that cool stuff for you know natural stuff I think is great so I got her about 10 minutes or 20 minutes after she was born and we checked her and adjusted her so a whole different ball game it's not with every birth but it happens a lot at birth it's, it's not the car accident. It can be from the birthing process. So with kids especially, like I'm telling you, the, the colic even, not nursing well, the digestive problems, the, all that stuff we think is just, oh, they're just going through it. It's not normal. And they don't have to go through it. They don't. And that's why we take care of kids. It's not, it's not, it's not reactive. Can I, it's never, the intent isn't supposed to be reactive. It's supposed to be promoting wellness, proactive. I know like with my kids, they don't have pro- like back problems. I adjust them two, three times every single week. My son has never had a breathing issue since. Did I stop adjusting my son? No, he still needs to be adjusted. My daughter, my daughter, it is, she's a bulldozer. My daughter is walking now and she just straight up, I mean, she hits her head. <clears throat> it's kind of scary when you think about it, how much, but I'm like, thank God I can adjust her every time she bonks her head, but she bonks her head a lot. She hits it hard. She just goes full force. She's not like my son. My son was always more timid, like I'm, I'm testing everything. My daughter's like, whatever, I'm going for it. And she just, she's, she's really brave, but she hurts herself a lot. But think how many times your kids fall, how many times they fall on their butt, how many times they hit their head, how many times they jump on the trampoline and fall off. You know what I'm talking about. Well, guys, there's an effect to that. They might shake it off, but there's an effect to the spine. And so what I see with kids is, is kids, you're not, you're not gonna see pain. <clears throat> You'll see child starts having headaches or they start having bowel issues. They don't go to the bathroom regularly. They're not going two, three times a day. They're going once a day or once every two or three days, right? <clears throat> They're having asthma. They're not breathing well. 
You know, they're, 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 they can't keep stuff down. They're throwing stuff up. These are subluxations. This is signs of nerve damage. There's interference in the spine. Every single time we see that with kids, you know, adults, headaches. That is the, that the, these, are all, these are the most common warning signs we see in practice, just so you know. I see it all the time in practice. Most common warning signs we see are these. And, and if you are a guest and you are looking at that health, you have a health assessment form in your black folder, if you're looking at that, this, this might be going on with you. Don't take this lightly. I, I really, I just feel like the need to speak to you. Don't take it lightly. That's, these aren't normal things. These are warning signs or something underlying going on. And if it's not addressed, these don't get better. They get worse. You start circling more things as time goes on, right? You, just, you circle more things. We, we want to help you with that. We do. I, we actually, I want to talk about Jonathan and a lot of you heard his grandmother speak at her makeover um, a few months ago just with, with just a testimony. Um, back in, we're coming up on a year, so last December, um, his grandmother hears our radio show, brings, brings Jonathan in, and Jonathan at the time was six, and so he's taking he, his, his chronic asthma and chronic constipation and, 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 and bad bowel function at six. So bad that he takes so many inhaler puffs that his heart is racing, and they're having, they're actually saying like, he's taking it too much. It might actually have, a, have an effect on his heart like, like shutting down. Because anytime you take the epinephrine inhaler, I did this as as asthmatic for 20 years, that epinephrine speeds up your heart. Long term, it can, there's a lot of effects to the heart. I took it for 20 stinking years, so I know it, it, it wires you up because it gets that heart rate going. That's the effect of the medication, or, or of, of, the, of the meds, of the inhaler. But always, always, always having issues. They were actually considering going in there and doing some removal with this colon. Six. It's not going to the bathroom. And, and so he comes in, and it doesn't matter that he's six. We did our exam. We saw that there was a thermal scan. The heat was coming off his lower back and his neck, damage, you know, nerve interference. We took x-rays. This was his uh, first x-ray. This, is, this was a, a second one. Uh, I know it's hard to see they're, they're little, but his, he had lost. Check this out. He had lost. He had lost. Normally from the side, you should have a nice 45 degree curve in the neck that protects the spinal cord and nerves. So he, he, he had lost half of that curve by six. That's, that's a lot of loss. And so his spinal cord was no longer relaxed. It was getting, it was getting stretched. That type of tension isn't good for anybody, but especially a six year old. Now he had no neck pain. He had no back pain, had no pain, but he had, he had a problem with the spine. So he can't base it on pain. These nerves, your core doesn't feel pain at all. These nerves, only 6% of them have pain fibers. This is sneaky. It's sneaky for adults too. This stuff can build up. Your spine can do so much bad stuff structurally and you don't feel it right away. You'll have symptoms. You'll have symptoms and organs though and it's hard to link it. But we started adjusting him. We, started take, we took his neck from this and we put his curve back. The tension that was on his spinal cord started to come off. And guess what his body started to do? started to work, started to heal. It didn't heal up overnight, but it's gotten to the point where he, he's no longer taking medication, which is a big deal. Doesn't use his inhaler uh, hardly at all. So his asthma, he's still considered an asthmatic, but he takes no medication. He, ha he hardly ever even takes his inhaler anymore. So his asthma, he doesn't really have it like he used to. Goes to the bathroom now without having to take, like, a, like, a, like I think the parents are giving him Miralax, uh, like, a, like a stool softener. They don't, they don't do that anymore because he's going normally. Well, we didn't treat his asthma. We didn't treat his colon. We, we got him just working better. We, that's what we want to do with any kid, with any adult. And that's, you know, if you're a guest, that's what I wanted, we want to do with you. We want to help you out. We want to help your kids out. If, if, this is, if this is you and you're dealing with these things right now, don't, don't leave here in the same boat you came in here. That, doesn't, that does you no good. Take care of yourself and we want to help you do that. We, we actually, in, in our office, we will do a full uh, exam on you. We will do x-rays if needed. We will check you and make sure if this is going on and it's from your spine, we can really change your life. We can help correct that, your, 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 your body. We can help get your body to function better. But that starts with you taking action as, 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 a, as a guest. So don't leave here without getting yourself checked up. Matter of fact, in, our, in this week, we've set some appointments aside, which is on your, your health uh, assessment form. There's appointments to come into our office and have this whole thing done. It's really important. This is big. Um, when you do, we are going to waive the initial exam fee for you coming in 
if we have to do x-rays, it's just an x-ray fee that will be taken care of. Very, very minimal. As a matter of fact, we do digital x-rays, which is the latest technology for x-rays. And digital x-rays are just 65 bucks in the office. So it's very manageable. Good way to find out what's going on with you. If you have kids, this is really big too. Little bitty kids, we don't always have to x-ray little bitty kids. So there might not be a need to do an x-ray. But definitely in a thermal scan, anybody can have that. There's no radiation that comes off that. It's a heat scan. But if you want to extend this to your kids, we can totally do that. Just let us know. So the time you circle on your health assessment form, that's going to be your appointment time in our office. Circle that time. Be committed to that time. That's your time. We'll call you the night before to confirm that with you. But, but circle that time. That's huge. That is your appointment. And, and we will look forward to taking good care of you on that. Our office, we have a three-day office policy with, with anybody that's coming in as a new patient. We do all our exam and testing the first day. We do uh, an adjustment if, if we need to the second day to see how the body responds. And then the third visit, we go over just our recommendations and how we can help you. But seriously, if, you've, if you have never had your spine checked or your children, see my team. They will help you with that. Very, very important. So don't leave here without doing that. Um, solutions. I want to give you some solutions real easy. Leaving here, nutrition book, that's a must. Um, there's a couple of plans. We have the core plan, which is everybody should at least start off on the core plan. You're making about three big changes. You're, you're, you're really doing good fat, healthy protein, and you're, you're, you're reducing your carb intake. The advanced plan is if you're in a disease state, you want to switch to that. That's going to be more in depth. On this, you're actually really reducing sugar intake. You're trying to get it down to single digits. You're reducing your carb intake you're doing healthier proteins and a lot healthier fat. You're, you're minimizing even your fruits because there are sugar and fruits. But this is a little bit more aggressive way to start getting, getting your body to, again, uh, heal up better. You're, you're correcting a big source. Um, something for adults and for kids I think is huge is, is just whole food nutrition. Our, our protein isn't really a supplement. It's more of a food. And here's why. The biggest thing I can point out, number one, protein is huge for developing and aging muscles. So little and old. Promotes DNA repair. A lot of people don't know that whey protein will do that. Helps the DNA repair damaged DNA. That's huge. <clears throat> Digestive enzymes are in actually this one. And the reason is, is because it's not isolated whey. It's concentrated whey. It still contains enzymes and probiotics. There's still a lot of nutrient benefit to it. It's not isolated whey. That stuff's garbage. This uh, <coughs> source, there's no artificial flavors, no antibiotics, no gluten, no casein. Even though this comes from cows, they're, they're grass-fed cows. There's no casein in it. So it's easier to digest, very easy to digest. No hormones in it, no growth hormones in it. Very, very, very easy, low-processed protein. We, there's a, a, a whey, there's a, there's a chocolate. We have a plant-based protein as well if you're a vegetarian or, or a vegan or you just love vegetables, which is great. We have a vegetable option, plant protein, and it's vanilla flavor too, so it's really good. Um, um, Omega Builders, we have the adult version, we have the kid version. One of the most critical nutrients for de developing your mind, brain health, powerful anti-inflammatory effects, not just on joints, but on your brain. It actually has an anti-inflammation effect on the brain itself. Um, the optimal, the adult dose, it's 1,600 milligrams of omega-3. Um, the kids, they don't have to take near that much. The, the, our kids one is, it's an omega and D3. It's an oil. Now, what's really cool is the oil, if you've ever had cod liver oil um, in your life, yeah, it's not good. Um, you have to really down that and hold your nose. This is an oil. So this I would suggest for a, at least a little bit older child, um, uh, maybe not like a four-year-old, um, but this does taste pretty good. It's strawberry lemonade flavor. Believe it or not, they do that in a healthy way. So yeah, I was on the taste panel for this because we're on, on the Nutrition Advisory Council. We, 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 we approve this. Like it is, it's legit. Um, but it tastes good. But it is a thick oil. But it's just you just take a little teaspoon of it each day. Very easy for kids to take down. Liquid stuff's easy for kids. But this is a thicker, a little bit thicker consistency. So just maybe a little bit older child would be a good place to start. Little kids, flax seeds, chia seeds, blend it up in shakes. That's what I would do to get to get in the little kids. Okay. We are D, D vitamin efficient, not just in adults. 
it's also in kids. We just don't, they're not out in the sun as much. Uh, and they're, they're covered in sunscreen. The D deficiency is one of the biggest deficiencies of Americans right now. It's this. So how do we get the D? Well, check this out. Lack of D, infections, risk of infections, colds, ear infections, even cancer risk if your D is really low. So what is low? Well, there's a scale that, that you can get your D blood level tested. And, and, and the scale is 30 to 100. I'm going to tell you something. You want to be between 70 to 90. That's the ideal zone for optimizing everything from D, especially the immune factor. But if you're in 30s and less, like 20s and teens, I've seen single digit Ds. That is a big problem. And, and, and you need to be taking a lot of this, not just one capsule. You need to come see me. We can show you how to raise your D level up very fast, very effectively. With kids, not all kids can take the little cap. It's not a big one, but it's a little capsule. So with kids, the way that I would do the same, because this is a D and probiotics together, we have, a, we have just a liquid D, <coughs> which my daughter, my, my son, we, he, he takes that and he, it's fine for him. He drinks it. It's just only a couple drops. And then the probiotic powder, I put this in our shakes. I put his shake. I put it his, in his shake. So he gets this uh, daily. He gets this daily. And he knows it's his vitamins. It doesn't freak him out. He knows he likes it. It doesn't. There's no taste to this. You can blend it in basically anything. There's no taste. But they're getting the, that healthy gut probiotics for, again, gut health. So you combine them with kids. But just adult, it's all in one. Real easy. Uh, detox. Again, adults, this is a stronger detox we do have a detox powder for kids. It is very mild. It's for kids one and older. Literally one and older can do this. And again, it's a powder, so it, it mixes well. But you want to be getting stuff out. So medication, stuff out of the body, detox, because it's just we, we, we come into contact with so much junk that we're, we're not doing this enough. This is something that should be done on a very regular basis because just think about, think about you know, the food you eat, the water you bathe in, the air you breathe. You're getting that daily. We want to be getting rid of stuff because now with all the new chemicals and stuff that's created, these are things that don't come out of our body very well. Like you have to pull them out. And these are things that actually have like milk thistle, spirulina, things that will bind to toxins, you know, chlorella, and start actually pulling them out safely. Like you want components in there. So those are really, really big. Um, like we have two big events coming out. One is here in two weeks. We have our outreach week. And this one is really big too because it's a week event. And we're doing this with the Safe Haven um, um, shelter. So we did this last year. Safe Haven, just so you know, typically it's, it's domestic violence. And like it's usually with, with moms and the kids are, are getting out of that situation. And Safe Haven is helping to get them back on track. Well, these 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 moms, they, they have a hard time getting school supplies for, for their kids. So we're doing a school supply drive strictly for Safe Haven, that charity. And uh, it, if it's, it's pretty awesome. So this is, if you're thinking about like your, your, your family or friends, we've already had a lot of people ask. This week, if they bring a donation to, for school supplies, we, we also do you know, um, a discount on exam and actually just pretty awesome week that we do. So it's the whole week, the 28th through, through September 1st. So just be aware on that. That's, we'll be talking about that a lot the next two weeks. And then in a month, we're going to have um, a big heart health workshop on September 12th. It's going to be awesome. And uh, everything you want to know about blood pressure and, and cholesterol and, and blood sugar, how to reduce your risk, how to make your heart healthier than it's ever been, no matter if you're already on medication or not. This is one you want to invite your family, your friends that are taking blood pressure meds or, or congestive you know, heart you know, meds, all the different stuff. They're on dialysis. Get them to this. This is going to be an amazing event uh, coming up in a month. Um, and as with anything, we have... Uh, adult and kid bundles that we talked about. Anything we talked about today is always marked down, but we have some special bundle uh, pricing for everything. So just see my team. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but yeah, do not miss these. Do not miss these. And uh, if you don't have my email address, let me give you that, gatewaydc at gmail.com. If you have questions about anything we talked about, you know you can email me. We respond very fast uh, to emails, but we're here to help you. Um, and again, God bless you guys, and we'll see you at the Heart Health Workshop, okay? Have a good night.